This day was inevitable when I got this thing. I have been avoiding doing a video on this blaster for so long because this is the biggest argument starter in the entire Nerf community. Basically, no matter what your opinion on it is, half of the Nerf community is gonna hate you for it. It all comes down to the Nexus Pro. You're either somebody who believes that the Nexus Pro is way better than this in every single way and you should never get one of these for any reason, or you're somebody who laughs if you get a Nexus Pro and says, oh, this one is better because there's mod kits for it. It doesn't matter what you say about it, there's somebody who's going to despise your existence because you either like or dislike the Aeon Pro. But I figured why not, I might as well do this today because I've literally got nothing better to do and I've got to talk about this blaster at some point because people keep asking me for it on Discord. So with that said, let's get started with the Aeon Pro starting with the design. If you like the design of the Nexus Pro, you're gonna like this one. If you don't like the design of the Nexus Pro, you aren't gonna like this one. They basically look exactly the same except this this one is smaller and more in a pistol size format. It's basically exactly the same size of Retaliator, minus this barrel thing. We cover that up. Yeah, look, it's a Retaliator. And yet every time I look at this, all I can see is that weird pellet shooter thing they had in Zootopia. But I think it looks pretty cool. There is a Nexus Pro style muzzle brake thing on the front, but I don't know where it is. So we're just gonna do the review without it today. And because it's Start Zone, who is a competent company, when you flip it over, you're gonna see the same details on the other side. Even though this blaster is pretty minimalist and the only paint scheming are these three white bars, they still copied it on both sides because they're cool. I actually kind of dig the design. I think that it looks better on something like this than it does on the Nexus Pro. But getting onto the ergonomics, it is exactly the same as the Nexus Pro. This entire grip area Area is basically copied and pasted from the Nexus Pro. I mean, I mean, if you cut that off, literally copied and pasted. Copy plus paste. It's the same thing. Same exact details, same exact grip, same exact trigger, same exact stupid, stupid safety. Same exact mag release and same exact uh, add-on thing to make it shoot short darts. It's the same thing. The trigger is, again, the, the same weird trigger that they had on the Nexus Pro. It feels all right, but it just seems a bit too big, especially when the blaster itself is relatively small. It's about the same size as a Strife, but it's whatever. The trigger is a trigger. It does the job. I hate this safety. If you didn't watch my Nexus Pro review, let me explain all the reasons why this safety is terrible. The safety is important because this is a high performance blaster and if you leave it primed and you accidentally shoot it at somebody right here, that can cause some issues. But they did the safety in the dumbest way possible because they made it a side to side kind of safety instead of like a lever that twists up and down, which is what most guns like this actually use. But then they even made it worse because they made it stick out of the blaster body. So when you lay it down, the safety almost always gets pushed to the other position. If you leave it in the safe position, when you lay it down like this, it's going to be switched to the hot position and vice versa. I mean, it even happens sometimes just when you pick the blaster up because it's right where your finger needs to go and there's no mechanism to stop it from going there. It's a terrible design for something like this, and they did it not just with this one, but with the Conquest and Nexus Pro as well. Since I already have the camera here, I might as well go to the next part of the video. How does this blaster work? It's the same thing as a Retaliator, and it doesn't have slam fire either. Here's where the next problem with this thing comes in. Stupid dead zone. But let's ignore that for a second. This is a 150 FPS blaster that compensates for the fact that the Nexus Pro's barrel is longer than, than this one by giving it a slightly bigger spring. This is hell! Oh, one shot, my whole arm hurts now. Imagine trying to use this thing effectively in a war. I did it once and I said I would never do it again. I've learned that trying to prime it like this, where you crunch the two halves together and just kind of like put your hand right here so it pushes on itself, is the easiest way to prime it. That does not mean it's easy. It means it's the easiest way to prime it. No matter how you try to prime this thing, it is a nightmare and an absolute titanic pain in the ass when you try to use it on the field. Wish me luck, I'm going to fire 12 darts. After just 12 shots, my hand is completely bruised up. Here's a demonstration of the safety issue. See how it's pushed in? 
It's still primable, but throughout the heat of battle, I've noticed that it tends to shift from one side to another. A lot of times it ends up accidentally safetying itself during combat. So I'm not gonna judge this thing when it comes to the world of modifications because at that point anyone can do anything with anything, but in stock form, this thing is terrible and that comes from the bottom of my heart. I wouldn't consider myself a weak person even though I am basically a pencil physically, but when it comes to using blasters, I can run the Hades all day and the Hades is a titanic pain in the ass to use. This thing fatigues me after just doing the firing test and putting it through my testing procedure was a nightmare. Even if you can put the super heavy prime aside, it still has all of the problems the Nexus Pro had and even introduces a new problem that I haven't even addressed yet because you still have the dead zone, you still have the safety, and now you don't even have the ability to unscrew the thing on the back and change out the spring. You have to go through all of the hassle any other mod would take in order to just do a spring upgrade on this. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, because this hasn't been addressed much, this little cap right here is held in by one screw right there. In order to do a spring upgrade, you undo that screw, twist this kind of like an end strike barrel attachment and pull it off and the spring is right there. You don't have to deal with any plunger tube or anything. The stock is the plunger tube. That was my favorite part about the Nexus. This one doesn't even have that. It has all of the annoyances that the Nexus Pro has without any of the fun values that the Nexus Pro has. And the Nexus Pro doesn't have that many fun values. So yeah, removing any of those fun values seriously decreases the value of this. Now I'm sure half of you are probably screaming your thoughts in the comments section below as violently as possible, but stop typing for one second, let me clarify something. This review is of the stock blaster with no mods built in, because I know that mods would probably make this thing way more enjoyable to use on the battlefield. But I have to say as a reviewer, in stock form, this blaster is bad. Don't buy one. I understand that it's $25. I understand that it's kind of a budget level blaster but at the same time if you get this thing it's probably because you're settling for it and you're not saving up your money to invest in something better this thing is not fun despite it being powerful it is just a titanic pain to use no matter what you're doing with it even the firing demo it was unenjoyable it hurts to use and there's just so many things that are annoying about it that I can't enjoy any user experience with it at all if you do want to get one of these though I will link it in the description below and there is a place for this thing in the hobby in my opinion it's $25 and it shoots 150 FPS. That's kind of cool. You can't get that anywhere else. And if you plan on getting this and you just care about the performance, you don't care about anything else because you plan on destroying it with modifications, be my guest. It works. There's nothing wrong with it, aside from many things. But for the rest of the audience, I just can't recommend this. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below. What do you think of the Aeon Pro? Please be friendly. Friendly reviews. This is just a friendly, funny conversation of a review. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.